Hello everyone, I'm Jordana Van of Raven Light Holistic Healing and welcome to Honey Badger as a Spirit Guide. Now I have two Honey Badger videos, Honey Badger as a Totem and Honey Badger as a Spirit Guide. This here is the video that you want if you've never really been drawn to honey badgers or have had a lot of experiences with them, but they're suddenly showing up in various ways. If you do feel like honey badger has been a pretty regular visitor in your life or you're a big fan of them, you'll want to watch the other video, Honey Badger is a Totem, Personality Characteristics, and Life Path Challenges. And remember, there is a complete alphabetized library of all my videos on my website, www.ravenlightholistichealing.com, making it easy to see if I've made the video of greatest interest to you. Also, if you enjoy my work, consider becoming a channel member. Second and third tier channel members pick which videos I make next. So if you want me to make a video about your totem or spirit guide, this is how you do it. If you'd like more information, just click the join button next to the subscribe button and that'll get you started. If you can't see the join button, which will happen if you're using an Apple device to watch this, I provide super quick directions on my website for how to make the join button visible. Just go to the video description and the link will be right there at the top. It only takes a few seconds. You can also make a one-time donation to support my work, which guys, I appreciate more than I have the words to say by clicking on the super thanks button, the little heart below. And if you want to be notified every time I make a new video or post, make sure that you subscribe, click the little bell icon next to the subscribe button, and then click all. So let's get started. Keep in mind that with each spirit guide, there are a bunch of different messages and not all of them will apply to you. And so with each of the messages I'm about to give you, you need to ask yourself if it applies to your current situation. If it does, great, take it to heart. If it doesn't, let it go. The fat facet of Honey Badger's wisdom either doesn't apply to you or it just doesn't apply right now. So let's begin with the aggressive nature for which Honey Badgers are so famous. These guys have strong jaws and long, sharp claws, and they are purported to go directly for another animal's testicles during an attack. While they are indeed fierce fighters, this last bit is based upon a purely circumstantial account from 1947, in which a honey badger castrated an adult buffalo, as well as stories from African tribes that may not actually have been based on actual experiences. So it may be true, it may not. It does certainly speak to our perception of them as killing machines, however. And yet, even though they are called the quote, meanest animal on the planet, it's important to understand right off the bat that honey badgers are not psychotic killing machines. They're born with a visible warning system in the form of that stark black and white coloration to warn other critters that they're dangerous. And they make an audible rattling sound when they're upset. Both of these adaptations serve the function of warning other creatures off so that the badger doesn't have to engage with them, so they don't just attack everything in sight. Sometimes, honey badger shows up to warn you that you are ignoring some obvious warning signs and are badgering someone who's going to turn around and rip you to pieces. In fact, when honey badger makes an appearance, one of the first things you should be considering is whether or not you are willfully ignoring another person's obvious desire to be left alone because you think that that other person should listen to you or should do things your way. If so, stop. Honey badgers are stubborn, determined creatures, and as a spirit guide, they can indicate that the person we're trying to change not only won't, but that we are going to pay dearly for our arrogance in thinking that they should. We can't change people, guys. People choose to change, and then they only do so when they are ready and not before. If honey badger is around and you're trying to help someone who is clearly not ready, and again, you'll be able to see this if you're honest with yourself, Leave them alone. If this isn't occurring, then honey badger may be referring to you and not to someone else. One way in which this may manifest is in your being unfairly accused of being aggressive, combative, or controlling. This often happens when you're a confident person dealing with other people who 
wish they were as confident or as capable as you are. And rather than work on developing their own self-confidence and skill, they try to drag you down in the muck of self-doubt. What this most often looks like is these other people provoking you or trying to exert their control over you. And though all you are really doing is firmly shutting them down by refusing to be dominated, they accuse you of being the one trying to dominate everybody else. They may also accuse you of being angry or mean, even if all you've done is get appropriately frustrated with their treatment of you. This is a rather nasty form of gaslighting. They want you to doubt yourself so that you'll submit to their control or stop messing with the status quo that lets them keep doing things as they've always been done, even if, especially if, you've suggested a better way. This is where you really need to do some cost-benefit analysis, guys. I mean, how likely are you to win here? Honey badgers have exceptionally thick skins with well-developed necks and shoulders and thick skulls. They're practically armored against assault. And though there's a lot of urban mythology about their being bulletproof, which is not true, they are hard to kill. Porcupine quills can't pierce their hide, and they're fairly resistant to dog bites. There are also reputable stories about machetes glancing off their hides. And the only way to kill them that has been reliably documented is through bludgeoning them to death by whacking them with a club over and over. They have even evolved a set of genetic mutations that prevent snake and scorpion venom from binding to the cellular receptors that would signal their nervous systems to shut down, meaning that even the most deadly snakes aren't really a threat and in fact, they frequently eat them for dinner. Honey badgers are tough mothers, but again, they're not bulletproof. And in fact, they can easily become prey for larger predators such as lions. Two, while a bee sting or two doesn't trouble them, they can become caught in apiary traps when trying to raid a honey farmer's hives and be stung to death by a horde of angry bees. So what does all this mean? Honey badgers represent being thick-skinned and letting even the most toxic personal attacks roll right off your back, just as the badger shrugs off a snake bite or a scorpion skin or even an attack by a machete. And so no matter how people may be trying to make you doubt yourself and your capabilities and no matter how brutal their commentary, honey badger would most often just be telling you to let it go and keep doing your thing. Those other people can't really hurt you. However, and this is where the cost-benefit analysis comes in, honey badgers do lose to genuinely more powerful predators, as well as to swarms of bees. If the person attacking you is the boss, and there is not a hope in heck of you becoming the boss anytime soon, staying in that situation is likely going to require you to duck your head and be a good little worker bee. Whatever you're trying to change or improve, you're gonna to have to let this go too, no matter how utterly ridiculous it seems that people would be resisting your ideas. And if this makes you miserable as heck, it's probably not the right situation for you. Honey badgers are fiercely independent animals. Though they're occasionally seen in small groups, it's most typically every badger for itself. And so as a spirit guide, honey badger will tend to encourage you towards freedom, towards being your own boss, making your own decisions. So it may be time for a job change. With regard to those beehives, honey badgers are so called because scientists once thought that they had a fondness for honey. As it turns out, they don't care about the honey, but the bee larva, and they will happily destroy a hive to get it. In this case, bees represent the hive mentality, situations in which there's no place for the individual, and one must sacrifice at least some of their desires and rights in service of society as a whole, with those who step out of line being punished. Honey badger can signify that we are feeling really upset about a situation in which we think we see a hive mentality operating. So where personal liberties are being unquestionably compromised to maintain a status quo that supposedly serves the whole, but ultimately genuinely serves only a few. It can also indicate that we feel that we're surrounded by a bunch of sheep who mindlessly follow the dictates of authority or media. Honey badgers, who most often nourish themselves by digging, which involves an extended period of intense focus, 
have ties to obsessive behaviors. And so there may be an element of obsession here. You may be so wrapped up in being upset about all the mindless little worker bees or gullible sheep and thinking of changes you think should happen that you can hardly think of anything else. When honey badger's around and you're in this kind of situation and you've begun to make waves, you need to be very cautious about how far you're willing to go to topple the status quo. If all you're dealing with are a few nasty or stu simply stubbornly blind people, you'll probably succeed in dismantling the old situation so that a new one can be built, which would be really fulfilling for you. Again, honey badgers are quite capable of killing and eating venomous snakes and scorpions, which here would represent unpleasant individuals who try to bite when you upset them. But if you're dealing with a large organization, it's equally likely that you're going to be the one who's destroyed. You really have to think things through here and ask yourself what you're willing to risk. This doesn't mean absolutely don't push. Sometimes in nature, the honey badger wins when it attacks a hive and gets to eat all those bees as a reward. Only that the cost can be very high, perhaps even dev devastatingly so. And how important are these changes to you really? It has to be about more than proving you're right. You have to be truly passionate about the substance of the matter. If you're not, you just have to let it be what it is, no matter how dysfunctional it is. When Honey Badger showed up for me, this was precisely what was happening. And lo and behold, when I just let it go, the situation actually began to shift in the ways that I had wanted without my having to do the legwork to make it happen. Since I hadn't really wanted to put in the effort, I just knew the changes were absolutely necessary and I felt I was the only one who could make them. This was the perfect outcome. Another message to consider here. If you are someone who has always been a pleaser or a pushover, Honey Badger can be indicating that it's time for you to step into your truth and express yourself as who you really are. Honey Badgers have those strong jaws and can bite with enough force to crack a turtle's shell. This is linked to blunt speaking, often at risk of crushing someone else's feelings. Think of the honey badger's name too. Here we have one of the world's greatest sources of sweetness combined with a word that in the common parlance means to aggressively pester someone. Honey badger effectively represents finding sweetness in life in ways that other people find offensive or upsetting. Those of us who are innate pleasers, like me, thank you Libra Rising among other things, tend to get stuck in this pattern because our sense of safety is wrapped up in being liked. We fear that if others don't like us all the time, they will attack or abandon us. And so instead of reacting genuinely and spontaneously to others, all of our responses get passed through a sort of filter in which they're modified to match what we think the other person wants to hear. This is why strong Libra placements have such a reputation as charmers. You're not seeing and hearing the real us, you're seeing and hearing a mirror of you. Most, though not all, Libras are consummate diplomats and tend to want you to be the one making the decisions, though we'll do everything in our power to charm you into making the decision we want you to make. Uh, we're actually very stubborn and just a teensy bit manipulative. It's taken me most of my life to be able to be myself, to speak truthfully, even at the risk of upsetting others, in defiance of those very strong internal scripts. I'm still a natural diplomat and I will always seek compromise above battle. Again, I've got Libra rising, but I've also learned how to be blunt, direct, and to stick to my guns when I need to. Honey Badger actually really helped me with this. Honey Badger is not a diplomat and it's not a team player and it doesn't care one bit if it upsets others. I was in a situation where I was really needing to badger someone to do something that was part of their specified responsibilities and their not doing it was beginning to affect me and those for whom I was responsible. I didn't want to pester this person because I was afraid they'd get angry with me or that they would think I was overstepping my own role. But Honey Badger was adamant that diplomacy, which I had tried until I was fried, was not the answer and I needed to be assertive and set aside my fears that I was going to be attacked or removed from my role. I hated 
every moment of this, I might add, but it worked. And in fact, the other person actually seems to like me better now, which I find hilarious. How do you know if Honey Badger wants you to stop being a pleaser and be, start being painfully direct and honest in your interactions? You yourself will have been wishing that you could do this, even though it scares the hell out of you. As I said, I hated having to be absolutely unfiltered in my interactions with the aforementioned person because it was so far outside my emotional safety zone, but it had also been something I had really been wishing I could do. There's one other possibility here. This one is often challenging to accept within ourselves, so you may need to be a little extra gentle with yourself here. When Honey Badger's around, it is possible that the criticism we are receiving from others about our aggressiveness or domineering behavior or our difficulty interacting with others really is because we are being aggressive, reactive, or dominating. Honey badgers are ornery. They may not start a fight with every critter that crosses their path, but they will certainly finish it. The skin around their necks is also really loose. So when a predator picks them up by the scruff, they will whip around and bite their attacker in the face. Honey badgers don't take halfway measures in the self-defense department. It may be that you're responding to all irritants in ways that far outweigh the irritant itself perhaps delivering a cruel clap back to someone who is just offering appropriate constructive criticism. Or people might be trying to get you to be a team player, attempting to convince you to do things you would rather not, but that are an inherent part of being a member of the group that you consciously joined. And you're fighting back as though they were doing something intentionally nasty to you. It's also possible that you really are going overboard and trying to get the group to do things your way. Basically, if you feel like you're being attacked and you're responding viciously, it's time to step back and try to look at things from the other person's or people's point of view. Are they really trying to upset you? And if so, why? Is it possible you're coming on too strong? And if not, remember, Honey Badger is an individualist, so it's not happy when others try to tell it what to do. Staying, a situation with, staying in a situation which requires group cooperation may simply be the wrong thing for you right now. Now the fun part. Honey badgers wisdom on relationships. Honey badgers are not even remotely monogamous. There is zero attachment between the males and females. Honey badgers are also reclusive, secretive, and solitary. So if you've been wondering about the possibility of a long-term relationship with a new partner and honey badger shows up, that would be a hard no. And it would go without saying that you should not marry this person, at least not until a different spirit guide shows up. This person does not want commitment and they are exceptionally unlikely to ever open up and bear their souls to you. But if you're really just looking to scratch an itch, then this person is a great candidate to take care of that particular need. They won't expect anything more for, from you probably, and they will also probably never call you again. You may need a good fling. Sometimes people do. And provided that you're being sensible in the contraceptive and STD department, this can be a perfectly good thing. That being said, honey badger males bully a female into their burrow keep her there over the course of multiple matings and then leave. The female will raise the resulting offspring by herself. There's another obsessive element here. In the more benign cases, the sexual partner that Honey Badger is symbolizing is simply a very dominant individual and they may make you feel dominated in ways that are actually pleasing. Provided you are happily consenting, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this. There is a good reason that bondage is such a popular element of sexual play. Many people find it pleasing to be desired to such a degree that your partner would literally want to prevent you from leaving. Of course, again, we're talking about honey badger here, so don't count on that person being even remotely loyal or to take care of any kiddos that happen to result. Be smart here, gang. On the other hand, Honey Badger can also represent someone who comes on to you extremely strongly and will bully you into a short-lived but intense sexual relationship in which you do feel trapped and taken advantage of. 
If you aren't looking for a relationship with a dominating individual, Honey Badger would tell you to walk away from that person right now. There's one last possibility here, and that is if you are the person to whom Honey Badger is referring. It may be that you are recognizing some seemingly domineering or selfish qualities within yourself and are judging yourself for them. These may not be unhealthy qualities at all. You may simply be a take charge sort of person who knows what they want. We've been really taught to demonize these qualities in recent years, but they're not inherently bad. There's a reason the guys in traditional romance novels are so often take charge decisive types after all. And there's a huge difference between this and being an actual bully. So you need to do some introspecting here and determine if you are just the more overtly dominant person in a relationship with someone who has no qualms about this, or if you're really trying to control someone who's resistant. If it's the latter, you probably have some lingering wounds left over from relationships in your youth in which others controlled you, and you're reenacting a part of that toxic relationship with your present partner. We recreate our woundedness again and again and again in different forms throughout our lives until we heal it. And so you can use this situation to help you reach back into the past and find freedom from what initially hurt you. Healing is probably going to take a long time, but it always begins with awareness. The last message we're going to talk about has to do with honey badgers being relentless diggers. When we get frustrated with someone asking us questions about something we don't want to talk about, we often tell them, quit digging. Being extraordinary diggers, these guys can excavate a burrow in hard ground in 10 minutes, and they may dig as many as 50 holes in a single foraging period. So as spirit guides, there's serious encouragement to do some digging in your own life. If you think someone is lying to you about something important, don't take their words at face value. Do some digging, being aware that this may not wind up being great for your relationship. However, if you're involved with someone who is lying to you about something critical, you either shouldn't be in the relationship or your relationship needs work anyway. The digging may also not have to do with people, but with situations or areas of interest. If you felt like it might be a good idea to look deeper into something because you don't think what you're seeing on the surface is representative of the truth, do it. Be aggressive about it. If there's something you've wanted to know more about, particularly if it's of a spiritual nature, start researching. Honey Badger is not about easy answers. Nothing's on the surface. But so you wanna be doing the legwork to achieve a deeper, more profound understanding of the matter. This is probably gonna be time consuming and again, have an obsessive element to it. But sometimes we need the level of determination and focus born of obsession to really discover what is critical for us. Now, honey badgers are wanderers, so they tend to sleep in different burrows every night and their territories, which they share with other badgers, are enormous. They're always roaming. So you may not be digging into one cohesive topic, but into many, either all at the same time or one after the other after the other. This is likely to be a time of intense learning for you if this is going on. And so it can be exceptionally rewarding you may come to understandings that you've been seeking your whole life, but have never really had the time or focus to devote to uncovering them. Honey badgers actually can close their ears uh, when they're digging so that dirt doesn't get in. So essentially you're digging without allowing anybody to distract you. And this is one of the things that allows you to get to those realizations, that focus. So I hope this has given you guys some answers to your honey badger experiences. Remember that if there's a video that you want to see, become a channel member at the second or third tier and your requests will be added to my official request list from which I draw possibilities for the next video. When I'm ready to make a new video, I'll pick three animals from the request list. Third tier members get to vote for the one that they want from that three and that's the video I make next. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Cheers.